Hello everybody and welcome back to the Wattpad Book Club. I'm your host Phoenix and today I am joined with Jolene once again. Hello, hello. Aren't you glad to be back? I'm a little sniffly but yes. You, you have allergies. That's gross. No. <laughs> Shut up. Allergies aren't real. This is my- of my many years of life, this is my first one with allergies. Makes me want to drum off the building, but don't do that, because it's unhealthy. <laughs> that reminds me of what you said, like, right- like, right before- right when I got out of call with you! <laughs> oh god. It's okay. They don't have to know. Yeah. Well, today, God. Uh, it was the wheel was spun and it landed on my choice. And I don't really have a lot of good decisions. I mean, I have some really good fan fiction, but Jolene has forbidden me from messing the words SMG four. In uh, <laughs> don't even utter it, please. I beg of you. It's it's not bad. You just gotta have. It's, it's, no. It's advanced no. humor. <laughs> advanced humor. Yeah, it's for specific brain. <laughs> I don't think my brain is running enough for that. Well, anyway, since I couldn't get Jolene to read my favorite fan fiction of, I think it was called Love po Potion. It actually was pretty good and whatnot. But I guess we're not reading an SMG34 fan fiction. We're gonna read a Law X reader instead by my favorite author. Dude, were you just dissing my favorite fan fiction? <laughs> no, I said God bless. You know, <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> I, I don't think I can get into it. I appreciate your offer. Yeah. Um, yeah. Alright, this one I, I read. It is an absolute beautiful fanfiction. And it's the, the same person that wrote the My Sword and Shield, Scarlet Skies 14 and whatnot. Shout out to you, bitch. I mean, I follow them. For oh a my reason. god. <laughs> what? Am I not supposed to call them a bitch? I mean, I meant like in a <laughs> sincere way, you know? I mean, I mean, I meant you know what, that, that's up to you. That, that's up to you. Yeah, it's like that one, it's like that one vine from back in the day where it was like, I love you, bitch. I ain't never gonna stop loving you, bitch. Didn't he end up killing her? I, I like, what? The <laughs> anyway, proceeding on. Okay, uh, yep. anyway, with the, with the description, um, <laughs> the description You are like, like snow, yet so cold, yet so beautiful. Long reader. If you're here for Spice, chapter 18, my friends. A mysterious woman is saved by Surgeon of Death himself. Despite his cold demeanor, she's entranced and curious by the, about this captain, for she cannot capture his aura completely. She starts to get under his skin, but he must focus on his invasion of Rocky Port. His focus starts leaning towards other things, however. Each of them is a mystery to the other. What will become of this fateful meeting? And then they do not own the story of one piece. They don't? I th I specifically wanted to read this because it said that they owned One Piece. Fine. I'm very sorry, my friend. <laughs> this is the most disappointing news I've ever received in my entire life. Anyway, we're reading this. <laughs> I was really hoping I could think of some disappointing news for you. <laughs> what would be disappointing for me? You're like, oh shit, D anime's disappointing? canceled. Yeah. Oh god. Uh, I'm not recording next week. <gasps> what? <laughs> <laughs> Bitch. Right. Girl, I am working on my birthday. Oh, what's your birth? My bad. <laughs> no, it doesn't fall. It falls on that week, but not on Tuesday. Gotcha. You know what? I'm taking you out to a nice dinner. You're gonna get. Oh my god! You want everyone. Me, <laughs> everyone wants to take me to nice dinners. I don't even know who to go with anymore. <laughs> I think you should go with me because I'm special. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were gonna leave it as I think you should go with me, baby girl. <laughs> I was just gonna die. Get, get whatever so you funny. want, Pookie. It's all good. <laughs> Money is not an issue here. <laughs> oh my god. You know, I just took my mom to this expensive restaurant the other day. Oh, yeah. how, how do you feel about seafood? I love seafood, man. Like, like, uh, like shrimp cuff. I had this. Um, okay, off topic. Completely yeah. off topic, but. I had this amazing, um, lobster, like, alfredo. Mm -hmm. Genuinely, I know you would have loved it. Was it hella expensive? Yes. Yeah. It was, like, nearly 30 bucks. Now, uh, tell me later what this place is named, man. That actually but sounds pretty I got good. You. It's literally super close to White Oak, but Ooh, okay. it's fairly close. But, anyway. 
Oh, wait! Let's start! My coin! Oh, goodness. Oh, yes. The coin. I was just gonna go ahead. I mean, if you want. I mean, it's, it's a tradition. We gotta put the coin. Oh, yes. Traditions are important. Alright, chapter one. Shift and ties. You wanna be heads or tails? Head. Alright. It's heads! I knew it. You predicted Thank it you. before I did. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, the prophecy has spoken in my favor. In the dis Just in the like dis last time. <laughs> yeah. When I'm so excited, I get it. Yeah, in the, okay. in the near Oof. future, I will get the coin flip. <laughs> my body lies in an open space, drifting and flowing to the ocean's grace. My eyes water from the bullying sun. My journey to Eden has inevitably begun. Waves sing your siren song. Skin melts it to bare bones before long. The sky scavengers circle, forming my halo above. I wonder if up there I will finally uncover pure love. Yo, you may hate I'm... it, but she's spitting facts right now. Bars. Yeah, bars! <laughs> Yo, is she rapping? And she's like dying? <laughs> <laughs> terrible, terrible, terrible. Hold up, I'm a little dyslexic. I gotta change my font. <laughs> I want to be fancy and use the smart people font, but I can't. <laughs> I don't blame you, I can't use smart people font either. On the edge of the new world, drifted a plank of what was once a piece of deck of a ship. The crew had long since been eaten up by the sea in a room on a storm over a week ago. Their fates were a sad result of underestimating the power of the new world and its sea. Charmed by this deep blue that stretched for miles was a young woman laying on this plank. Scribbling what she thought would be her final thought on a piece of paper. Her lips were drier than the desert, her skin scorched by the sun. She'd managed to survive this long on her wits and luck, but it seemed she'd reached the end, the end overcome by hydration. Sunstroke did not help in this case. Her not being able to keep any food down that caught from the waters below. But yeah, oh, I can't, my brain. Her mind was spun to the point where she was borderline hallucinating, her head pounding in unimaginable pain. With a final stroke of her pencil, she collapsed, having used the rest of her energy to describe her words. She stared up at the vacant sun. Her, she tried to laugh before her passing, her eyes closed gently, and her lips curved into a peaceful smile. What she had assumed to be a whip in the tide was actually a submarine emerging from the depths. She heard the sound of warring engines, barely having the strength to turn her head towards the sound. She assumed she assumed it to be only a hallucination and closed her eyes once more. A few moments later, as the water settled, Hatch Creek Creek opened for a man with raven hair to emerge. He peeked from the hatch, studying the situation. A petite body sprawled helplessly on driftwood. Her skin had been burnt to a crimson red and practically glowed. The shade in sharp contrast with her silver hair that he laced along the floorboard that laced along the floorboard. She was stripped down to just the black cloth that she had wrapped around her delicate that once was prob that was once probably a dress. The remaining cloth was used in a small tent. Not at all big enough to shield her whole body. Under the tiny shelter, there was a wooden contraption that he did not have a clue about. A few staggering books and a black suit. And rolls of paper. Assuming the scene was safe, he leapt over the, to the castaway, softly landing to the raft, so the raft didn't wobble. From the looks on the girl's emaciated face, she appeared to be dead. He swung a nodashi that was perched on his shoulder down towards the body, and gently nudged it to check for signs of life. Oh, she keeps it going dead. Rest in peace, us. <laughs> yeah, it's like one chapter, and it's like, this is the end of the chapter of Logs Reader. <laughs> I'm just dead. Uh, da, 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 da. did you did you lose your spot? Uh, yes, I did change my font again because I damn. can't read. I'm sorry. Uh, not getting not a getting response. response. <laughs> he knelt down to get a closer examination. He picked up a limp arm and checked it for a pulse. It was so faint he couldn't be sure. Coming to his knees, he rested the side of his head on her chest, checked for a heartbeat. After a couple of seconds, he could hear a quiet thump in her lungs. 
He grew concerned, realizing the heartbeat was picking up speed. <laughs> ah! <laughs> he gasped at the surprise of what he thought was a corpse scream and jumped back in fright. He didn't go to. <laughs> she didn't get too far, the pain being too immense. That didn't stop her from picking out a peculiarly long needle and pointing it in his direction with malice. The picture was quite haunting to the man. Don't come any closer, voice scratch. Who are you? Are you a mirage? <laughs> Imagine asking a mirage if they're a mirage. <laughs> no, but I'm a doctor, he calmly said. What on earth is a doctor doing out here? she asked. But the excitement was starting to make her feel over. She heaved and let out a deathly cough, writhing from the burn in her throat. I think you have bigger problems. He approached her, easily disarming her. Come with me. I can help you. He adorned the most interesting plate. Gray eyes, completely void of color. Starving woman took a long look into them, weighing her options. It was either certain death, or possibly death. Covered in terms with the op options, her adrenaline had ceased, causing her body to collapse once again. He sighed and proceeded to hoist her weak body over his shoulders. His nodachi on the other. Oh my god, how romantic. <laughs> I can't believe we're half dead. <laughs> oh, it's a... Mommy, how'd you meet Dad? <laughs> he found me when I was almost dead. <laughs> yeah, he found my corpse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was light as a feather. He leaped back onto the deck of the ship. His crewmate circling around them with incredible curiosity of what he what he had snatched from the raft. Take to the infirmary, he commanded, handing her body to some men prepared for the stretcher. He watched as she was taken away, inside, then back to the raft. He glanced over the object, scattered about, debating on whether or not it was worth retrieving them or not. He decided it would be good to burst through the belongings to get a sense of who exactly he was saving. His feet touched down once again against the plank, and he began rummaging. He carefully unrolled the scrolls and found himself marveling at colorful paintings. These paintings consisted of various landscapes, some that he is even familiar with. One particular painting caught his eye, featuring a landmass that rose majestically from the water. Gentle snow falling all around, waters were painted with beautiful violets and blues, framing a bird-like island, hooded in white. Swallow, he muttered. He was in disbelief as well as pain with bad memories the image brought. As the feeling of his throat tightening up, he rolled the paper back up and continued his investigating, trying to trying to brush that moment of weakness aside. The wooden contraption he studied, but still couldn't make out what it was supposed to be. He decided to conclude his search with skimming through the lady's book. These books turned out to be journals full of diary passage, passages and poetry from the looks of it. He made the decision to bring these items aboard, wanting to further investigate their journal. He did not consider things like respecting someone's privacy when it came to the possibility of the crew being in danger. Oh shoot, I thought it was going to be word out. Yeah. Considering things like respecting someone's privacy when it came to the possibility of his crew being in danger. Right now, she was in no shape whatsoever to perform anything drastic, but it was still worth being cautious bringing a stranger aboard. For all he knew, she could have dark ties with an eminent enemy. She could, have, she could have a reason for becoming a castaway, having been thrown overboard or banished from somewhere for being a criminal. And what of her hair? Why was it silver? I think the silver part is like the least of his worries in the world of, you know, One Piece. Yeah, there's people that are fucking giants or humans that there are fucking giants. There are. <laughs> His first mate is a bear! Yeah. It's a mink, thank you very much. It looks like a bear. <laughs> if, it, if it looks like a bear <laughs> and walks like a bear, it's a bear. bear. <laughs> if it looks like a doctor and walks like a doctor, is it a doctor? Yeah. No, it's just law. It's, it's all good. <laughs> so not a doctor. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> it, it's a surgeon, technically. <laughs> He shook his head to stop trailing off and thought, and he'd, he had to get back to his ship. Room, with the turn of his palm, a blue skirt mask engulfed the raft. In an instant, the supplies 
had disappeared with a flick of his fingers, and he jumped swiftly through the air back onto the deck. Just about everyone who had gone down below to either aid the girl or return to their duties. Let's continue our course, he ordered his navigator. Yes, Captain. The remaining crew scurried into the submarine as it sank back into sank back below the depth. The captain casually made his way towards the infirmary. One hand in his pocket, the other still clutching his weapon. A smile crept over his face, the little mystery he had let aboard his ship, thinking it may maybe will give him some entertainment during his long voyage. Okay, we're gonna entertain him? Question mark? I can do that. <laughs> How so? Wink. <laughs> yeah. Tucks hair behind ear. Oh god. <laughs> we Jeff still got. <laughs> we still got 17 more turning over with it. Fuck! <laughs> god damn! Can we skip to it? <laughs> I mean, if you want. Nah, no. we gotta do it in okay, order. Okay, let me start. We can't. <laughs> we we can't gotta just, just skip uh, to damn. this month. <laughs> yeah. Jeff. No, absolutely not. Chapter 2, right? We got plot. Yeah, and story. I gotta, we gotta mm. figure out how we're sleeping with him, you know? Like, what's, what's the story behind oh, it? We can't just skip right to what it. What? <laughs> Excuse me, what did you say? That's what I meant by plot. Oh. Uh, Gotcha. Yeah, poor plot. plot. That's what I mean. <laughs> no, I did not say that with plot. I said we got plot to get through, and that's what I meant by plot. <laughs> I bet. I, you know, maybe I shouldn't have. <laughs> maybe I shouldn't have introduced you to Ao3. <laughs> Two days has passed since the Jane Doe was brought yeah. aboard the ship. <laughs> <laughs> The man had had worked his magic, healing the injuries she had mysteriously sustained. His analysis was that she was in some sort of crash, that she was battered and bruised in various places, along with owning a broken- we have a broken left hand? And a torn tendus yeah. on that wrist! Yeah, R.I.P. hand. <laughs> Her bones were brittle. Every afternoon I break my arms, and every, every evening I break my legs. <laughs> Her bones were brittle from the lack of nutrition, so it was a, a thrill to have a challenging, a challenge piecing the tiny bones back together without causing further damage. It seemed like she was also developing muscle damage from dehydration. Her body going so far as to occasionally, to have occasional seizures while still unconscious from the lack of electro, electro, electrolyte, electrolytes. Thank you. <laughs> The doctor gave the woman the Thank proper God. care he needed, uh, having having hooked an IV drip to her to help her regain fluids back into her body, and another tube inserted through her nose and down her throat to give her proper nu nutrition. Night had Thank fallen. Oh well, shit! Oh, I can't read. I got this. Breathing's it's hard. Okay. It's okay, Bestie. <laughs> okay, Bestie. That's why we have a book club. Yay. <laughs> Night had fallen, and the doctor was on his way to check on his patient. He entered the infirmary, swinging a lab jacket over himself. Two of his men were taking notes on the lady that laid unconscious, pale as a ghost. Bandages wrapped tightly around the... the ham... the... the haphazard? Oh, the haphazard, okay. Yep. Injuries on her body. A cast was over her left arm and was held up with a sling so she wouldn't further damage it if she were to seize again. A web of wires led to a machine beeping to the rhythm of her heart rate. He placed a stethoscope in his ears and studied the patient's heartbeat. It had improved since that morning. Next, he took a blood pressure cuff and wrapped it around her right arm, placing the stethoscope underneath to record her blood pressure. Still low, not as bad as yesterday, at least. How's she doing with the et the eternal? And. Okay, how is she doing with Enturl. the turtle? Yeah, yeah, so Enturl. I never heard that. Enturl. Enturl? No, I've never said that word before. Yeah, Enturl. What the fuck's an Enturl? Curly, I don't know. I ain't a doctor. <laughs> You're like, bitch, do I look like a fucking physicist? <laughs> do I look like blah? <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, shit, now that, now that I'm looking at you, I guess you don't. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, when, when Female Law is finally released, I'm like, Oh my god, Jolene, it's you! <laughs> oh my god. It's like, oh my god, did you see the figure? You saw the figure I sent you, that they already have a figure for her out. Yeah. Like, it hadn't even been, like, a week. She's yeah. gorgeous, I love her. How- fuck. How is she doing with the Eternal, whatever the fuck that thing is, he asked to his colleague as he jotted down notes in her charts. Good, it seems. There hasn't been any com complications, he reported. Good. Until she gains consciousness, this will help her regain nutrition. He gazed, studying the image of the woman's face. She looked as if she was a delicate antique, like fine china that would crack if you touch it. Pale as snow, with only the faintest of pink across her face from the fading sunburn. The doctor didn't realize he had spaced out. What is it we do now, Captain Law? His his crewmate jol jolted him out of it. She will possibly wake up soon. She will likely be in a panic state, so we have tranquilizers, tran tranquilizers prepared with 10 milligrams where we're gonna get sedated like a fucking animal. <laughs> I love that for us. <laughs> the assistant saluted his captain and left the, the two in the room alone. If it were anyone else that spotted her, she would have been dead by now, he muttered to himself. He took a seat at the desk, adjusting to the girl in slumber, continuing his stare. He rested his head on his hands in deep thought, closing his dark eyes. From the looks of her belonging... Oh, for those her belongings that stowed away with her, he concluded that she must be an artist or charter of some kind, most likely from the West Palu. She had been to the North Palu as well, it seems, based off of her art and journal passages. So where was her crew? Did she have a crew? There was no evidence that suggested she had any acquaintances that traveled with her. No way someone like her made it across the Grand Line. Surely, right? How did she get here? It seemed... It seems she capsized upon reaching the new world. That certainly was plausible. He wouldn't he wouldn't know for sure until she woke up. She grabbed the hold oh fuck, he grabbed the hold of the clipboard and that held her charts. Taking out his black rimmed glasses to see more clearly. He flipped through the sheet by sheet. Old. Huh? He d I said old. <laughs> Yeah, reading glasses. <laughs> fucking nerd. <laughs> it's a fucking nerd emoji. <laughs> <laughs> he flipped through a sheet. Her vitals were improving slowly but steadily, healing like any other human would from the state that she was in. She surely was strong-willed to survive that long at sea. How did she not get eaten by a sea monster? <laughs> We're just- we're just built different law, it's fine. Don't, don't worry about it, baby girl. <laughs> he scratched his head at the- what? <laughs> it's a jeez. <laughs> yeah, no confidence in us. Nothing. <laughs> he scratched his he head- He doesn't know how good we are. Yeah, we're just different. Maybe we have, uh... Hockey. Maybe, maybe we just give the fucking the the sea monster a death glare, and they they back up. We we pull a shanks every time it's about to eat us. Oh, I love that. Oh, my <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he scratched his head at the mystery of this Jane Doe. She surely was entertaining, though. He he uh marvels. Marvel. Yeah, yeah. He marveled at any opportunity to test his skills. He loved being able to pick her apart, like a kid tinkering with a new gadget that they'd never seen before. He wanted to learn her story and play detective with this toy, picking bodies apart and putting them back together. This was his idea of fun. Yeah, keep this guy Weirdo. away from morgue. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, yeah, that's terrible. <laughs> Reaching back to the stack of papers, he then flipped at the page found laying next to the woman when he was found. It was a crimpled- it was crimpled- but crimpled a little, and the handwriting jerked and twitched. <laughs> <laughs> he read the poem for probably the twelfth, the twentieth time. A smile curling across his face. He liked it, it being so morbid yet scenery. The contrast of those ideas was well blended together to Three. stop. Oh, because I will be denied this. 
<laughs> Siri. <laughs> The contrast of those ideas were well blended together to spout the last words of a dying woman on her last breath. It was astounding she brought beauty into, into the thought of death, and with just a few words. The stirring of bedsheets startled the doctor. His head snapped towards the, sound, the cause of the sound. He quickly got up from his seat, inching closer to the medical tray to, that held the tray. He was already- he's already to fucking sedate us, like, we're some kind of fucking, like, wild animal. <laughs> I mean, it's either he sedates us or we hurt ourselves, so. Yeah. Anticipation grew within him as he watched his patient slowly flutter her eyelid- her eyelids. She remained still, her eyes still moving on their own. She glanced over towards the blurry figure that hovered over her. Look at you. You're awake, he stated with a pleased smile. The girl's head was raging and pulsing with severe pain. She still couldn't get herself t to move. The phantom figure was speaking, but she couldn't make out his muffled words. Let me check over you real quick. He put on some medical gloves and proceeded to examine the, j the joints and reactions of his patient. He, His touch was careful but precise. Oh my god, how considerate it. <laughs> <laughs> she could feel his warm hands through those gloves as she, as they took hold of her arms and legs. Just as her vision started to clear up, a bright light shone harshly in her eyes. Law checked her pupils, and then her ears. He was pleased to see she looked to, to be slowly regaining her strength. Uh, albit, albit still in albeit. the vegetation- Oh, albeit. Uh, that's how you spell albeit? Like, albeit. Still, you know, oh. yeah. I mean, it's still in a vegetative state. You did wonderfully. He praised. Oh my, he praised us. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking he, she could not hear him yet, she could. Her heart jumped at the sound of his voice. Not yet being able to speak or move, she managed to twitch her fingers in response to the unknowing man in the lab coat. I can't believe she did not recognize the Oh my god. <laughs> His eyes widened in amusement to hastily rush over to her side. So, you can hear me. Very good. He grinned, placing a hand over hers. You're one tough woman. Question. Yeah. So, how many- how many law fics have you read? Too many. <laughs> no, okay, no, that's perfect. That's perfect. I need your expertise. Okay. How often in Law X readers are we a patient? A lot. <laughs> like, like the last one we were in a coma, and this one we're in a vegetative state. Like, there was one I read I just, that we were like, we co, like also, it was, it was a modern co one. The coworkers? Yeah, it was. A, it was <gasps> modern a, AU. It was a modern AU. Well, I don't read them anymore because uh, it was by that one author that blocked me and whatnot, oh. so I can't read it anymore if I wanted to. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it was like. You, we were- it was a modern AU, but instead of him being a doctor, he was a, like, uh, one of those ones that deal with animals and whatnot. Oh, a veterinarian. Yeah, he was a veterinarian. We were his co-worker, like, starting new, so we were, like, a receptionist. So yeah, I wish I knew how it ended, but <laughs> I don't know. So sorry. It's okay. Hey, I guess that means it wasn't that good then, huh? <laughs> You're one tough woman. Hang in there. You'll have the strength. You'll have your strength back soon. I promise. Her eyes leaked tears, hearing his reassurance. Whether his this voice was an angel of heaven or a person on earth, she felt like she was safe here. With a wave of comfort watching over her, her eyes shut once again to drift back into sleep. Lost smile faded as she fell back asleep. She didn't seem to be fully awake, but it's good that she was coherent. Satisfied with the check-in, he hung up his coat and made his way to the library. The libraries where the mysterious woman's belongings were spread about. They clustered a study table. It's, how big is this fucking submarine that they have a library? Big as hell. What are the blueprints of this thing? You're gonna remake it? Is it gonna be your Noah's Ark? Yeah. <laughs> God has told you to recreate the submarine. <laughs> and I said bet. <laughs> See, this one we could be doing with more brain cells. Building a submarine. Yeah, instead of me watching S and G four, I can I can just be going building a lost submarine. You can you can make you can make the you can... Yeah. 
<laughs> you make the next ever edict of the two more, you know. Oh my god, <laughs> I can go see the Titanic! <laughs> <laughs> you okay, can't make it terrible, terrible. <laughs> they, they cluttered a studying table where a large white bear stood googling. Oh, god, Google it? Oggling. Oggling the pieces of art. Seeing his casting come through the door, he excitedly rushed over to him. <laughs> Captain! Have you seen all these? These are fantastic. Yes, I have, the captain responded, continuing his pace, walking past the ex exasperated bear. He took a seat at the, at the desk ch chair and relaxed with a huff. You find anything interesting, Beppo? Yes, sir, he saluted. I think I've encountered... Uh, but uncover the name of the woman. Looking at the signature of her paintings, I believe it's supposed to be Ash DeVoe or something like that. Ash DeVoe, huh? He shut his eyes, his head resting on his head. Oh, his hand. <laughs> his head resting on his head. <laughs> Never heard of that name, have you? No, sir. I'm sorry. He bowed and apologized. I can certainly say she is talented. Oh, and I found these hidden in her suitcase. In, in his paw, he held up a bag of long needles tied together with purple thread. They were soaked in that bottle on the table, sir. I was trying to find out what it was. It's a toxin, Law answered, already knowing the answer by the looks of the liquid. He held the bottle to get a closer look. Man, fucking no, Mr. No- a fucking nerd emoji. <laughs> <laughs> Fascinating. Poison darts. They must be her weapon. Clever. Beppo bowed once again, overwhelmed with guilt. Of course, sir. I should have known. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Calm down, Beppo. He pondered a moment. So, her name is Ash DeVoe. More likely, she comes from the West Blue as her paintings show. Her journals and sketchbooks indicate images of plants, people, and landscapes, along with poetry. She seems to be just a traveler that got unlucky and ended up lost at sea. It appears so, sir, Beppo saluted. Law set the bottle of toxins back on the table and took and took hold of his uh no nodashi as it crutched the sand back up. He took one last glance at the painting of the island of Swallow. A terrible pain of his chest had formed, his insides twisting like knots. His teeth clenched at the voice in his head calling out for him. The voice of a dear friend gone too soon. Beppo frowned at his brooding captain. Maybe you should go get some sleep, captain, he timidly said. You haven't slept in over 24 hours. Lost sighed, trying to brush aside the bitter memories. Yeah, you're probably right. Alert me if she wakes up again. The polar bear sadly watched his summon captain stretch away to his quarters and then glanced over at the cap the fuck and glanced over at the painting too. Oh captain. Cause and I will be the night and I will fall for you. Actually, <laughs> that's how you keep you keep you keep doing that. So I have a I have a beautiful thing that I'm gonna send you. And we can look at it later. Oh my god, is it the song? Is it is this him being emo? <laughs> Perhaps. <gasps> Late yes. in the night, a haunting cry echoed through the infirmary. Sedative! Give her the sedative! yelled a crew member, holding down a panicked woman down on the bed. Shh. It's okay. You're fine. Her key her feet kicked and flailed in fear. She'd woken up in a scary place, hooked to unknown machines. There was a tube down her throat, a mask over her face, and wires attached to her body. Who are these men? What do they want? Her breathing was out of control as she gasped and bellowed. The man used all his strength to hold her down as the needle punctured her skin and delivering a tranquilizer into her bloodstream. It was followed by a blood curling curdling scream. Call Captain Law! Complete darkness. Tried at the bedroom. The man with raven hair lay awake, swimming in his own thoughts, his eyes hanging barely open. He had just woken up from another nightmare. He was not ready to try and sleep again just yet. He shifted his body to one side and stared blankly out the window. The longer he stared at the night, the more black his vision became. His, lip, his limbs were hung heavy by 
hung by heavy chains. Snow falling around him. His body hung high in the air to what the group had seen below. You just had to go and screw everything up. Why'd you come back just to mess with me? I love how the... Uh, sorry. I saw the accent on the air and my brain's like, wow. <laughs> like, you might, I just see his name and I took my hair behind my hair. No! <laughs> <laughs> uh, good I thought. Two... Hello? Yeah. Oh, so sorry, normally you'd laugh at me when I, I said I'm tucking my hair behind my I didn't hear you, so I'm just Damn. like, oh god. <laughs> oh, fuck. You're like, fuck, we disconnected again! <laughs> I was literally thinking that. Two men point pistols at each other in a tense standoff. One man stood with a feathery pink overcoat with the most menacing look. <laughs> yeah, fuck that guy. He moved with pure rage. Pointed his gun with all his spite at the other man, like, helpless, bleeding into the snow. The poor man, my man, please! Like dying, using the last, <laughs> the very last bit of his strength to hold up his gun. His last breath drew near. Every gasp felt like gravel in his throat, and his seeping blood began to fuse with the snow that surrounded him. Why must I be forced to kill my family not once, but twice? Locke squirmed and cried in terror, hearing the sound of the click of the evil man's gun. No matter how much he yelled, he couldn't prevent the inevitable. The scene goes black. He becomes lost in a pitch dark void. A faint mechanical laughter. The pink feathered man hid echoing in the darkness, making goosebumps crawl all over his skin like creeping eyes. He runs and runs to escape the evil phantom, but gets nowhere. Just for him to fall down a bottomless pit, falling and falling, the laughing laughter grows louder and louder. <laughs> Law <laughs> <laughs> gasped, his heart jumping into his throat when the transponder now startled him awake. Groaning, he rolls over and reaches the answer. Click. What is this? He rubbed the aching eye. The patient is late, Captain. We keep her sedative as instructed, and she's starting to relax. The crash could be heard in the background. Well, um, well, kind of. Okay, she's not relaxing at all. Well, who can do this? <laughs> so inside. Come on, quick. Lost that up on the edge of bed, pinching between his eyes. But he brushed his hand and tried to fall out. He never bothered sleeping with clothes. Be awake. Yo. Wait, he, did, he didn't bother sleeping with clothes? <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah, it says he it says he never he said he never bothered sleeping with clothes. It'd be a waste. What does this comment <laughs> say? Hold on. What does this one comment said? Why do I feel I'm like this with this girl? To... <laughs> Why do I feel like that's going to come up again at some point? Me too. I I mean I need this confirms. Can I do mm -hmm. some research on this? <laughs> Of course. I think you've done plenty of research though. Damn, you're right. <laughs> he slid back. <laughs> slid back on his pants and shoes, not caring to bother with a shirt. Talk We're leaving his here. bedroom and didn't forget to pull the shirt. <laughs> 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 he didn't forget to prop his sword upon his shoulder. Although exhausted, he would rather He was rather excited to meet a, his mysterious patient. A subtle smile one can casually see grace in his lips. This should be fun. What the fuck is our Get me out of here! If, if we're like, we got just tranquilized and we're still fighting and throwing shit. Yeah, we are literally- Do we have the will of D? Oh my god! Maybe we do! Yeah, it's, it's, it's Ash back Devo. Into <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, you're so right! Yeah. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> uh, and fourth friend fell in a crazed panic. The feeding tube was removed along with the oxygen, not giving her full use of her voice. Four men. Four men held her down with Jeez. all the strength they could manage. Damn! We're like, weren't we just described as dainty and frail earlier? Yeah, we're small, dainty, and petite. <laughs> That's how we were described. <laughs> Calm down, please. You can't be moving around like this. <laughs> pleaded one of the men, but rolling down his face from all the energy it took to hold her down. Where am I? Who are you? Her voice was 
I'm sorry, that's so fucking good. Who are you? I am from ancient Greece. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen that, right? Yeah. Perfect. I don't deserve you. You should be with a real girl. Who are you? I am from ancient Greece. Where am I? Okay, her voice is dry and scratched harshly at her throat. You're aboard a ship receiving medical care. If you were in critical condition, please don't worry. She fought desperately against the drugs that she had, she had spreading in her veins. Her vision was blurring in and out, not letting her see the faces of her caretakers clearly. All she could make out was wired of with large ghostly masses of white. This was a nightmare. This nightmare frightened her awfully. Slowly against her will, her energy started to deplete. Just moments later, she couldn't fight it anymore. This was a losing battle. Damn. Her ears were ringing louder than church bells. Her head spun in circles, her feelings swirled like whirlpools. At last, the poor girl's stamina had reached its limit, and she finally decided to cut her losses. Her chest started to relax, rising up and down as she tried to gasp for air. Maybe... Maybe she met with death. Was she in purgatory? The only sound left in the room was the echo of her heavy paced breathing. Sheesh, you really made a mess. Suddenly, a low, masculine voice reached her ears, sending a tingle down her spine. The caretakers let out a huge comical sigh and fell back into the floor. Thank goodness you're here, Captain. You really put up a fight. They reported in, be in between breaths. A slow shuffling of footsteps started to approach her. And if this baby does stop meowing, I'm literally just gonna grab him, I swear to god. <laughs> I can't even hear him. I swear to god! I, I can hear him and that's what's bothering me. <laughs> Motherfucker, put him on the mic. Let's hear what he has to say. <laughs> no. No, no, no. <laughs> where the hell are you? Is he clawing at the oh, door? Where, 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 where is he? Like, I swear, I don't know if he's at the door or if he's in the room. <laughs> Is he in the room with us right now? <laughs> oh god, please. I'm hallucinating. <laughs> anyway. Oh. <laughs> he's killing me. Killing me, killing me, killing me. A slow shuffling of footsteps starting to approach her. A new ghost leaned, loomed over her. His blurry form gave off an uncomfortable aura, black and gray swirling all around like a dense fog. Wouldn't you see his skin? I get, cause he's not wearing a shirt. Yeah. So even we, if we, we can see the the cool ass ab. I mean, yeah, skin that he. <laughs> <laughs> his flesh. Yeah, f <laughs> flesh and bones. He had yet to make out a face in the hazy gray mask. Was this the Grim Reaper? <laughs> I'm Captain Law of the Heart Pirates, this boat. You are very lucky we found you. Glad to see you join us again in the living. Captain Law? She squinched her eyes, trying to gain better focus. His voice was so plangent. She wanted to know who it belonged to. A pair of grey eyes started manifesting. There's a lot more I'm manifesting, but... Yeah. They stared down upon her like a dark, stormy cloud. Yes, but do not worry. You'll be just fine. The morphing mass of the morphing mass of black shifted, taking a seat beside her. You were given a sedative to calm you down when you woke up. I didn't want you to hurt yourself any worse than you are now. I see. Pieces of her brain were beginning to come back together. Her conscience slowly beginning to repair itself, and her eyes wandered the room to get her bearing. You feel like talking? Law leaned in closer into the patient. Am I dead? No, this so is Ohio. <laughs> you know, Ohio's getting hit pretty bad. They actually we could be dead. This. <laughs> oh no. No. Our friend. Ashley. <laughs> the woman with silver hair tiredly asked, making Log grin at how funny for her question was. No, no, you're safe. He let out a quiet laugh. Can I ask you what your name is? Astrid? I was literally looking at Astrid as one of the name things Damn. that we should choose. <laughs> That's so crazy. Her vision began to return. Her, her heart began jumping wildly in her chest as she 
and she could finally see who was speaking to her. A dust of pink brushed her cheeks, and the man she thought she dreamed of was right there, staring back at her. He was real. But you could call me Ash. Ash, gotcha. Where are you from, Ash? You His put on a shirt, continued. sir. You're very distracting. <laughs> very distracting. Yeah, Where? <laughs> His voice continued to give her shivers, so cool and calm in those eyes. I'm not really from anywhere, she answered absent-mindedly. The blood on her cheeks started to grow hot while she studied his... She studied his body, which was so casually exposed. The man's body was decorated with intricate tattoos all over, right down his knuckles, along with, with being so appealing to the eyes. <laughs> she chased... <laughs> What? Something about that? I just can't focus. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's tattoos! They twist over so... <laughs> god damn it! They twist over so meticulously around his slim, muscular build, accenting his mysterious and alluring persona. What a work of art this man is, Ash thought. She had never come across someone like this. Was she some sort of demon? I mean, was he some sort of demon? Yeah, probably. <laughs> no. He raised an eyebrow. You have to come from somewhere. You're telling me you just manifested here on this planet one day? I'm yes. sorry, that's such a funny fucking question. You yeah. looked at with skeptic. <laughs> yeah, you just came fully morphed. Yeah, I you mean, sexual, a child ever. I just came like this. <laughs> just came like this. Yeah. The overhead lady, lay there with <laughs> I am <laughs> ah! Lay there silent, giving no answer, but she was still drifting in and out of her head. Hey, you there? Lost snapped his fingers. The rise in his tone snapped Ash out of her trance. Oh, I'm sorry. Honestly, I'm just a drifter. I don't have a home or anything. She averted Almost. her eyes away. Oh my god, she is homeless. Literally homeless. Ooh. She averted her eyes away from the wall so she could try to focus better. Her heart still beat like a drum from the situation, but she decided she would not. She would show no weakness. It doesn't matter. All right then. He leaned back in his chair, crossing his legs. But how did you end up washed up like that? You were practically dead. Ash gripped the sheet, hearing the, the macabre straight statement. The memory of her floating alone in that piece of driftwood. When driftwood came flooding back to her. I was sailing with a crew that let me aboard their ship. Turns out they didn't prepare themselves properly for the twisted weather of the new world. A bunch of idiots had no idea what they were in for. I made a huge mistake coming aboard their ship and a twister sent us flying away with the ship becoming destroyed in the process. A snappy one, huh? He thought. Then again, I'd probably be pissed too if I were in this situation. He continued with his interview. I'm sorry to hear. What business do you have in a place like the New World? I'm an artist. She slowly tried to sit up in the bed. It proved difficult as her arm buckled in the process. Her head still spun in circles. I was looking for new inspiration. Are you serious? Like this? <laughs> like we're literally just, hey, can I get to ride on your boat? I need inspiration. Yeah, we almost died for getting into. <laughs> Lost to her movement. Taking no over good. <laughs> yes, oh. He did what to our movements? He studied them? <laughs> studied her movements. He knew of her condition. She was still very weak and struggled to sit up. Her body was still very thin. She must be suffering from fever because her face was flushed. Wrong, but okay. Go yeah. off, King. Have a place to look for inspiration, he stated. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> thinking, that the, thinking the reason was a little ridiculous. Captain Law of the, the Heart Pirate, you said? She asked with a change in tone. The bluntness in her voice caught him a little off guard. Yes, that is what I said. What's your inspiration then? Law widened his eyes. Her attention kept. Her question captured his attention. What do you mean? Astrid finally faced him with a straight exp expression. I mean, what's your reason for being here then? Perfectly aware that this is the 
hell of a place, but you're here too. What is, what is it? What are you risking your life for? The doctor sat there for a moment, pondering how to respond to this. He still wasn't 100% sure she was an enemy. He couldn't just speak about his plan so casually to a stranger. Her eyes shone like shone like gemstones that glimmered in the fluorescent light. Amethyst, no. Sapphires? I don't think I feel like telling you, he snidely answered. This made Ash a noise, and it clearly showed. Ooh, man, I see. This made Law snigger. Maybe, but I prefer to call it caution. He stood up and made his way to a nearby sink. Ash said nothing as the man ran the faucet to fill a glass of water. He was busy studying his demeanor while staring at his back. His back tattoos continued. His black tattoos continued to his back as well. He heard a large abstract symbol with a smiling face, almost covered the whole face. Must be his Jolly Roger. How ironic, she thought. Sure, knowing a lot of pirates have their Jolly Rogers tattooed to their back and devotion to their crew. Kind of strange choice for a man that seems so uninviting. This man supposedly saved her life, but at the same time, he came off so rigid. A short moment later, he returned to the pit with the young lady with a glass of water. Thank you, she responded as he handed it to her. You're welcome. He did not sit back down. Instead, he picked up a large lead and put it on his shoulder. This made Ash uneasy. You're also welcome for saving you. You thank me whenever you like. Thank him? How so? I'm- I'm- I'll yeah, think about too. it. Yeah, says, <laughs> <laughs> Taking a sip from the glass. Mm. He smug- He smugly smiled. Well, get some sleep. See you in the morning. Hey, before- You could take his leave. Ash interrupted. Where's- Where am I- Where the fly okay, Don't worry. It's upstairs. He answered coldly, not even bothering to face her. Well, can I have my sketchbook? If you say please. He looked over her shoulder at the fuming woman. Please. She rolled her eyes. Sure, I'll have my navigator bring it down. Good night. Lasher did not bother returning his farewell and leaned back in bed. What an insolent man. Scout. Disappointing. A man who. <laughs> a man like that with a body like two. <laughs> She soon fell asleep, not before her mind faced with her impression of the man named Law. She could not stop thinking about what his story could be. He seemed so complex, both in personality and in appearance. Being an artist she was, this was certainly an interesting specimen. Mysterious, bold, rude. But, but yet, the thing about him was alluring, but not be explained. The mystery was hiding under his many layers. Layers? Like an onion? Like an ogre? <laughs> he did save me though. Is he really that kind of man? Is he really that kind of man for my dream? Interesting. What a mysterious guy. Captain Law's mind going as well as was going as well as he casually walked back towards his room. He thought it was funny how she went from looking like a corpse to looking like a ghost. Her skin just about matched her hair and how pale she was still. And the attitude. Oh my. That was <laughs> amazing. Pretty fun toying with her. Damn, bitch. We're literally- we literally we're almost literally died. Dying right now. Fun. We're literally not having a great time and you're being like this? Yeah. Rude. Don't worry, it changes in chapter 18 apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I understand, but we'll get there. But... Yeah. <laughs> he actually wanted her to stay up long. He actually wanted to stay up longer teasing her, but he was the doctor and both that. He needed breath. Beppo, he talked in his transponder now. Yes, Captain? An enthusiastic voice spoke on the line. Bring the girl her sketchbook, will you? Oh, sure, right away. The tire rank collapsed in bed after kicking off his shoes. He stared out the window into the dark sea. After, he mumbled. What a mystery she was as well. She claimed she comes from nowhere, but everyone starts from somewhere. 
Even if she was an alien or a monster. Even... Even they are created and made who they are. Ah, uh, and made who they are somehow. Did he try to bother it up? Did he try to bother it out of her? Was it worth it? Why was he too fixated on this? He sighed into his pillow, knowing he had more important things that required his attention. Just days before, Trafalgar had been residing on the island of Amazon Lily, taking care of the rookie pirate Straw Hat Lucy, who had bravely fought the battle of the Marine Force. <laughs> ah! It's our boy! My son! I love him. Now that his part was done, he had time to plot his new course of action. All those foolish rookie pirates will be doing everything they can to make a name for themselves, tackling the new world head on. And it wasn't lost style, though. He looked to stand out, not by standing out, by waiting in the shadows until the right moment strikes. Right. As he lay there, fall failing to fall, oh wait, no, failing to sleep, his mind drifted to the twisted place of what he could do to eventually meet his goal. Yay, that's my boy! <laughs> so how you feeling, since we got to read from our favorite author? Very good. It's been so long since we've read uh, our Sword and Shield, but I still remember the plot very well. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited if we if we get that one. Yeah, I don't think it's updated in a while. I think they're on a break or something. Oh, that's fine. I mean, they have other. We have other options. Yeah, we do. I'm very excited when we see them again, though. It won't be as good as. It won't be as good as that one, but we have options like Luigiism <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Bowiegi and um, that other one. Uh, Bowiegi was good. Yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> really want to read that Harvey X reader, but Minho still isn't back yet. <laughs> stop! Stop trying to stop being impatient. People are mourning. I know. No. I'm sorry. <laughs> I still want to read ahead because literally, the, I just Why saw don't it you just do it, coward. All right, fuck it. Because literally, the last chapter I saw that got updated is called Wedding Bells, and I'm like, wait a minute, we're getting married to Harvey? I really want to read it. <laughs> it's called Restraint, Jolene. <laughs> How am I supposed to have I... human reactions if I read ahead? I don't know, my friend. Yeah, I hope it lands on my choice. If we do, uh, we're gonna read that SMG34 fanfiction that I found. No. <laughs> uh, oh wait, for you, Minho. No. Stairs. <laughs> <For us. laughs> I literally. It's really good. <laughs> so not even think it's right. Review. All right. Anyway, I guess speaking of that, we will spin the wheel now and uh, <laughs> do all that shit. What if I added to the wheel, but like oh, very sorry. small? No. Okay. <laughs> it's whatever. It's fine. It's not like I wanted to or anything. Anyway, this one's called Dark. Well, Tops. oh, that's great. I'm glad you didn't want to. Fuck you. If it lands on my choice, <laughs> <laughs> you know. All right, you ready? If it lands on my choice, you know I'm having you read some fucked up shit. What, Corazon? Hey. Oh. Some dead dove. Spin the We're both gonna be traumatized. Yay! Hey, we're reading about religion again! It's only the load on my screen. Reli religion? Yeah. Oh my god, wait. It's one we use them. <laughs> Are we gonna finish? Are we gonna finish? We're gonna finish That's the so fucking fanfiction, finally! <laughs> Oh my god, wait, where is it, where is it, where is it? Was that like one of the first No, we're not, we're not gonna finish. Oh, okay. Because okay. we're only on chapter five, and <laughs> we've hit it like, one, we do like two chapters. Yeah. So, yeah. Who fair, those words are big words. <laughs> big words. Yeah, they're difficult to read sometimes. Okay, I need you to to say this word aloud. I'm gonna spell it for you. Oh God! S U B S U S E Q U E N T. 
Oh Jesus! That's just just word. type it in chat. I can't spell. Like that is so amusing. <laughs> Can you see that word? All right, let me let me see. Sub subsequent. 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 I did it! I did it! I did! <laughs> See, the words aren't that big. You don't know, man. You're, you're... Oh <laughs> I can start reading and I'm like, ah. <laughs> I guess I'm doing better. I feel like I have to be like mildly. Like. I'm laying on the floor, right? And I feel like I read better when I'm reading in a mildly uncomfortable position. Yeah, I feel ya. I'm, I'm the most eloquent reader when it comes at 3am reading Wattpad fanfiction. It's just who I am. I finally- I finally did something I never thought I'd ever do yeah. on my Tumblr. What- what- why- what, what'd you do on your Tumblr? <laughs> What do you- what do you think I did? I'm concerned with that Is reaction. Is it age appropriate or...? <laughs> yes! Okay, uh, I didn't know, I'm sorry. I oh my god! I was asking a question, I didn't know where you're going with that! Anyway guys, thank you for tuning in to the Wattpad <laughs> Book Club. Yeah, We will you. see you. <laughs> oh shit, I forgot to do- I forgot your outro. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, I forget my outro all the time. Check all the, the cool links in the description yeah. of more videos with other people. We got... We got Minho. Minho's cool. I met... Well, I met Minho once. Yeah. I think. And then there's Heisen in there, and then Cameron showed up a couple times, and then there's there's Raekwon now. He's pretty cool. And Gummy. We can't forget about Astro Gummy. THE Gummy. Wait, Gummy wrecked with you? Yeah, I mean, they just- The famous Astro Gummy? Yeah, the famous Astro Gummy recorded with me for a Book bookup a couple times. Oh my god, that's so wild. I know, right? They're so <laughs> famous. Dude, I, I still- I'm still not over them popping up in the- and like, the live stream. Like, my brain's like, oh my god, it's Astro Gummy! Yeah, I literally the told them that. The famous Astro Gummy from the Phoenix Flare videos! <laughs> I literally told him that, like, I mention you all the time during my, out of my outros of, like, the live streams, and when, when you popped in, Jolene was like, oh my god, it's the Astro Gummy, you, you're like a celebrity. <laughs> <It's the Astro laughs> Gummy. Like, I'm just like, oh my god, I'm starstruck. Literally, I was shocked, but anyway, what, what did they say? I kind of want to know. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's a recording, I, it's, I'll find it. They're like, oh my god, really? Like, yeah, you're like a celebrity around here, you just... <laughs> the Astro Gummy. Alright, Jolene said all my shit for me, so now all I gotta do is read the script. Hold on. Alright, uh... Alright, okay, there's my script. Alright. Uh, my name is Phoenix, that was Jolene, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Bye! <laughs> Memorizing is hard.